They did it to me again, fellas. They clapped me midway. They clapped me midway. Does someone want to give me a quick little DM and tell me where we got cut off? How's the uh, how's the audio? You motherfuckers, give me some thumbs up if the audio is working. All right, so I don't know where we got truncated. But I was talking about how the, the metaphor, right? Prehistorical man had no capacity to really apprehend what he looked like. You know what I'm saying? Unless he stooped so low on bent knee in a fucking lake or like a piece of frozen tundra. It's the only time that a, real, that a man could really apprehend his appearance. And so, and so prehistoric men had a salient quality about them where they were, very, they were projecting outward because that's what men do, right? They're thrusters. They thrust into life. It's a very, it's, it's a, it's, you don't want to come from the, from the first person perspective. You want to come from the third person perspective. We've talked about this, the bird's eye view. The bird's eye view is the apex view for men outside yourself outside yourself is is the premier quintessential de facto avant-garde to where you to, to live your life it just is it just is it's factual you can go read fucking scripture you can go read the perspectives of prehistorical men all the great men that you guys so so fervently quote on the timeline these motherfuckers had zero concern with aesthetics or looks whatsoever. And what I'm trying to, to, to fucking explain to you is that when you are, look, look at your contemporaries, look at your contemporaries, look at your, look at your co-evils in public. Every fucking chance a man gets to look at his reflection in a fucking window shop, in a mirror, in the rear view mirror, every fucking chance a man gets, they're constantly, constantly trying to reappropriate and restructure their appearance, which is a really fucking gay way to go through life. I'm not talking about not being stylish. I'm not talking about not getting a fresh cut. I'm not talking about taking, you know, good hygiene. All of that shit needs to be taken into consideration, but it needs to be taken into low consideration. Because here's what happens. Motherfuckers are on dates with women. And we all know this is true. What they're doing is they're trying to run out the clock. Because they don't have very much charisma. They don't have very much life experience. You know what I mean? It's kind of a desultory culture. And what happens is these men are sitting there at the table. And they truly are there to be glanced at. They just want to be pretty for 45 minutes or an hour on the date because they genuinely believe that their good looks are going to they're going to pull the boat. They do. They think that their good looks are going to pull the boat and get them into the door. And it's it's so far from truth. It's so far from truth. And it creates this very, very self-conscious, egocentric, very bizarre pathology where you just think that you don't need much to say. You just want the clock to expire. You're just going to dribble out the basketball and pray to God 
that she saw you in the right lighting or the correct angle, or she saw your fucking supposed 32 inch neck in your jawline and that everything's going to fall into place. That's, that's sort of the, that's the, that's the modern males <clears throat> default mode default mode and i don't think i don't think men really understand or comprehend how much your life would change if you had really no idea what you looked like on a daily basis because then you would judge yourself from performance then you would judge yourself on performance and character and you'd be a lot more fucking powerful i mean truly imagine a life where you had really no idea what you looked like you know what I mean? Because men, I do believe men are instilled from birth with a fuckload of confidence. You're a man. You're the most powerful creature on earth. Why would a man be born and not have incredible, powerful confidence? That's just not possible. That's just not possible. But what has raped and subdued men's confidence is playing the aesthetics war, being in an aesthetics war and thinking, oh, this guy's better looking than me. So, you know, he's going to get the bitch. No, 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 no. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. So I do strongly urge you to be hyper self-aware and be, be cognizant of this because there's really no reason for you to be fucking preening and pruning in the fucking mirror. There just isn't. There just isn't. Your perspective of life will drastically change if you're unaware of your, genu of your general, and I want to say general, daily appearance. Your, your life's going to change because you're going to focus a lot more on the substance of what you have to say. And you're going to focus a lot more on the, the, the icker, the God's icker in running through your blood. And you're going to bring that forth in a salient capacity and you're going to do it stridently. And there's a lot more confidence in that. There's a lot more confidence in that. You know what I'm saying? Like men have to flash their fangs sometimes. You know what I mean? You have to awaken and summon the beast. You got to be able to flash a fang. You got to be able to swipe a talon. You know what I mean? You got to be able to have swift claws out there. Or you're just going to get eaten alive. So fuck the aesthetics treadmill. No one gives a fuck what you look like. Except other incels on forums. That's it. That's about it. It's the only thing going on there. Now, when it comes to long-term relationships... I said this the other day, and it's a controversial topic, but I do want you to hear this. I came up with the, with the conclusion that ambition, ambition in like the raw sugarcane form is feminine. Ambition is a feminine mode. Um, and I'll tell you why. Women need men to push their agendas. Okay, so a woman is always going to use the shield, the ages. She's always going to use the smokescreen of a tall, charming, handsome, well-resourced, well-calibrated man to push her agenda. And that's how it's always been in primal times. And, and, and in 2023, by the way, I want you to understand something. We're back to the primal days. It's here. It's here. Most men are generally relatively very lazy. Just like lions, just like male lions, kind of patrolling the pride, you know, laying on your fucking belly, getting a fucking tan. Um, the, the hard work grind shit, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. It's a forlorn, it's, it's antiquated. I don't see it coming back anytime soon because civilization is, is in decline. So the, 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 the sort of primal ethos is in a revival right now. Men are relatively lazy. They are. Men are relatively lazy. You got, you got women. L let me explain to you something. L let me explain to you the natural order of a, of a long-term relationship and how it works. Okay. And this is going to be a foreign concept to a lot of you, but this is how it is. Women are the ambitious ones. So when women get wily ideas, you know what I mean? They want to start a garden. They want to fucking bake cakes. They want to open a fucking storefront, whatever the fuck it is, clothing line, whatever. Women will advance that agenda through a well-resourced male. You know what I mean? The man's just kind of cruising. He's already got his bread. He's, he's got his little business. He's stacking. 
but he's not fucking busting his guts like they did in the 50s. That's, that's just not happening anymore. Men aren't, besides like a certain faction of society of beleaguered men, and I do want to call them beleaguered, like dudes who actually have to put in sweat equity to earn their money. There's an old saying my uncle used to tell me when I was a kid. He was like, never use your back to make money. I always thought that was a profound saying. Never use your back to make money because your back only has so many you know what I mean? It only has so many. It's just like your heartbeat. Your, your spine only has so many times it can flex and extend before it explodes like grenade shrapnel. So don't use your back to make money. And I respect motherfuckers who do, but that's a general principle that I think is very solid in 2023. Now, here's the deal. A woman will want to start that garden or start that project or whatever. She runs it by the guy. And the guy ultimately decides if he wants to do it or not. But he's like, yeah, sure, baby. Start your fucking garden. Go take my credit card. Go get the fucking supplies. Start doing it. So my point is women are the ambitious ones because women conquer territory. And women are the agenda advancers in life because they need a man at the tip of the spear to lead the cause. And that's what leadership really is. Now, I'm going to flip some shit on its head right now that you guys do need to hear. This whole red pill morass right now, you got guys that <clears throat> think that they constantly need to put their bitch in check or they need to be super vociferous or, or boist, boisterous and they need to constantly fucking tell her what to do and control her and have this sort of Islamic sort of code right you got a lot of guys who are trying to be fucking super dominant with women i got news for you women have far more power than a man does in a relationship it's a fact i don't give a fuck how alpha or rich you are women do hold all the cards and the reason they hold the cards is because they have the soft power men have the hard power but women have the soft power and if you think for one minute that being a domineering, imperious kind of agent of chaos with women is going to get them to comply, you're in for a wild ride, my friend. You're in for a wild ride because what you don't want to do in relationships is you don't want to awaken the soft power in a woman. You don't want to awaken that beast. Because women are far more irrational than men, and they're more uncompromising in the sense that they, they will burn everything to the motherfucking ground. A woman doesn't give a fuck. You awaken that inner beast in a woman by trying to be Mr. fucking machismo all the time, you are going to awaken the fucking kraken. And then what happens is you've burned trust where the woman can no longer communicate with you because she's afraid if she tells you the truth, she's going to get punished. You know what I mean? Like about her, her desires or her inclinations or she's women will be very transparent with a man that they respect. They'll tell you everything. They'll tell you all their secrets, which is, which is the best position to be in. But what happens is when you start trying to be Mr. Fucking alpha all the time is it, it cuts off that pipeline. And now you've created a woman who's going to be very well behaved in your presence out of fear. But behind your back, she's going to be lashing out. She's going to be rebelling. She's going to be doing a bunch of fucking shady, slimy shit behind your back. And that's, that is the worst position to be in as a male on planet Earth. When a woman doesn't feel safe with you anymore because she can't communicate. Because you got to be Mr. Domineering. you got to be right all the time. And then you're just, she's just going to go in secret. She's going to go to the black market. And she's going to start fucking acting out there and rebelling. And then you're going to find out anyway. And then the charade is over. The jig is up. The jig is up. So it, it, it is a very symbiotic thing. But again, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different. Look, long-term relationships are dead for the middle class. This is going to be a, a super painful conversation. But it's over. It's over. You, you truly cannot embrace or get the full expression of female love unless you're very wealthy or poor as fuck right now 
That's, that's the landscape that we're in. And I'll tell you why. This whole advice in a long-term relationship about being unavailable is complete bullshit. It's a complete fib. It's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. You know what I mean? Like you can either only be alpha in the streets or in the sheets. You have to pick one. All the motherfuckers that I know that are alpha in the street, they're on their wife's leash. They're on their wife's leash. Think about all the tough guys that you know. The brawlers, the pugilists, the fighters, the the street guys. Think about all of them. They're all, they all get owned by women. All of them. You bet it's unanimous. Go look at all these UFC fighters who get cheated on routinely. It happens all the time, right? Because you have to pick one. You have to pick one. And what women really need above all else in this society is fun. That's all a woman really fucking cares about is fun. And so here's what happens. You get a street tough guy, Mr. Alpha. He's gone for too long. He's gone for too long. Thinks being absent makes the heart grow fonder. You know, one of those maxims, one of those cute little maxims from 20 years ago. And then he comes home and he's made too many mistakes along the way, which which scores her points. So now you're just giving her free points. And inevitably, inevitably, you cannot assert power at home unless you're in the game with your woman often. It's impossible. You, you, the, the landscape is different, gentlemen. It's 2023. You have to, and when I say you have to, it should be a pleasure. You know what I mean? Like a woman should be the pet monkey on your shoulder representing you. She's your representative. She should be draped over you everywhere you motherfucking go. I'm talking like in order to, in order to truly function a modern relationship, your, your, your chick is your side piece. She's your Walter PP7. It's a fact. She's your Walter PP7. She's your sidearm. Fully loaded. Bullets in the gun at all times. And that's how it works. Because if you don't have that, the, the culture is too fractured. There's, there's too many authority figures that are going to step in and capture her attention. You know what I mean? If you're not at home as the governing body, or as the superintendent, what's going to happen is your chick's just going to be scrolling fucking Instagram all day. You know what I mean? She's just going to get her programming from ulterior sources. Some, some form of media conglomerate is going to start programming your woman. It's a fact. It's a fact. Whereas in the 50s, you know what I mean? You could be a fucking milkman delivering glass bottles. But if your woman was at home, aside from a couple shows on TV... The programming wasn't near as insidious as it is today. Now, if you, if, you, if you leave your chick at home for a fucking week while you're overseas, you don't even understand. That, that woman has consumed thousands of hours of content, of programming. So then you come home and she's acting out towards you and you're like, what's going on? Well, motherfucker, you have a, a supra authority that is now by proxy – Standing in, standing in as a red shirt while you're out of the game. And that's why I'm telling you, in order to truly hold that authority that all men crave, you have to be in the game with her often. Guess what other demographic can, can afford to be with women often? The poor. They don't fucking work hard. They don't do jack shit. So poor motherfuckers also have the opportunity to fucking be with a bitch and be fun during the day. They don't give a fuck. But the bottom line is they're there as an entertainment source. Now, this is the, this is life on hardcore mode, by the way. Uh, If you've ever attempted to cohabitate with a woman, you will know it is the most treacherous, arduous, difficult thing you can do as a man, especially if you're in the middle of a, of a budding business or a business in the inchoate stages. You're, you're, you're playing life on the hardest difficulty setting by far because she's, she's constantly going to try to whittle you down out of love. She's constantly going to run a full court press on you and constantly going to want to try to, to wear you down. And when you're at the lowest of lows, she's going to put another brick on your shoulder. You know what I mean? Women are not designed by nature to take the bricks off of you. 
They're designed to throw bricks on you and see what your constitutional integrity is and see if you can stand up with that extra brick. When you feel like you're going to collapse, I promise you a chick who really loves you, she's going to add a, she's going to add a little plate. She's going to add a little two and a half plate on the fucking side of the barbell. Let's see this bitch topple. And if you can stand through that without toppling, that's when you have the breakthrough. That's when you really earn her full love, respect, and attention. Is when you can prove that she can't topple you, that she can't break you. Give it to me. I don't give a fuck. You can give me all the problems in the world, add a woman's drama to it, and you're in a fucking insane asylum. But only the best of the best can, can afford and even handle that path. It's brutal. It's fucking brutal. Any man in a long-term relationship, in a loving relationship, will tell you how fucking brutal it is. It's brutal. It's brutal, but you don't get to complain. That's the blessing. You don't get to complain. They do. They do, and that's the best part. That's the best part. It makes you ironclad. It makes you fucking superhuman. You got the world literally falling on your shoulders, and now you got to deal with the fact that a bitch spilled fucking apple juice on the floor, and she's fucking freaking out about it. You know what I mean? Like, you're just get you're flanked. You're flanked. You're just getting it from every fucking angle. Every fucking angle. And you're just bulldozing right on through with a fucking smile. Toe still tapping. That's the game right there. That's the game right there. But the middle class has faded. It's faded because, like I said, if you're not at home, if you're not at home, how the fuck are you going to suppress or usurp Thousands of hours of Instagram videos that chicks are watching. How are you going to get in front of that? You can't. You got to be the controller of media in a relationship. You got to be the media. You got to be the news. You got to be the fucking central party command structure. That's your job. That's your fucking job. So early on in a relationship when courtship's happening and shit, yeah, of course being unavailable is fucking phenomenal. But once you saddle up and once you're shacked in with a woman that you genuinely love... Sorry, pal. Not going to fly. Not going to fly because you're going to get twisted and corkscrewed by an alternate authority. And that's just what's going to happen. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen 10 out of 10 times. Nobody is immune to it. Nobody is. So your woman is your representative. She should be draped over your shoulder wherever you go, empowering you empowering you your woman should be helping you make money she should be helping you with projects she should be doing fundamental tasks that you don't want to do you should be offloading and out offsetting and outsourcing all the shit that you don't want to do to her and she'll do it with a fucking smile on her face women love doing tasks for men you want to talk about stoking and kindling the fires you want to keep a relationship alive for eternity i'm talking the simplest gestures that you guys don't even understand if you drop a fucking pen on the floor and tell her to grab it for you, a woman who loves you is delighted, delighted to pick up a fucking pen for you. I don't give a fuck what it is. They just, they just like to do shit. They just want to provide. They just want to do things for you. doesn't matter how trivial. That's where a female's happiness comes from. Seriously. Hey, babe, can you go grab my cigarettes from the car? She'll pop up all spry. Like a little meerkat, run over there, grab it for you, retrieve it. Feels good for her. Feels good for her. She knows you're busy. She knows you don't have time for remedial tasks. You don't have time for it. So that's, that's the basis of this conversation. I just kind of wanted to lay a rough foundation. And I wanted to uh, bring some motherfuckers upstage and um, shoot the shit about this. Yo, what's going on, man? What's going on, baby? Talk to uh, us. You know, I I want to start off by saying uh, I do agree with many of the things that you are saying. Uh, I disagree with a lot of the things you are saying as well, you know. So I, I will say I, I, I agree with some things. I do definitely disagree with some things. Uh, and I'm up here to debate, brother, you know. I, I like to debate. And especially when it comes down to the things that uh, I disagree with. Uh, but before I bring up some of those topics, I, I, I want to ask a few questions, if you don't mind me asking. 
Yeah, go uh, for it. Uh, do you have a wife? I was married for six years. I'm divorced, but I have, I'm in a long-term relationship. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I, Cause it, it, you know, someone t- I've only been, I've only been in long-term relationships. I, 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 my whole life. I've been, all my relationships have lasted four to five to six years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause this would be, you know, if, if you know, this is a, you know, I, I don't really know you too much. I, I, I've, I've uh, heard you speak on Gary spaces. I, I'm a GG three, three member myself. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, I know a bit, but not too much. Right. Um, and, and, and like Gary says, you know, if this would be if this was someone who hasn't had those experiences yet, it would be like a, a, a phony astrologer who's been divorced three times trying to give matchmaking advices. And, and I'm you know, I'm, I'm you know, come on, come on, baby. You should know me better. Than yeah, that right not too much. But I don't spend too much time on on, on the uh, on the on Twitter, but I, I will be uh, very soon. But, you know, I. I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a young guy. I'm 24. Uh, you know, I, I, and so, you know, I, I'm in the, I'm in the same, You're a baby. I'm a baby. You're a baby. I, absolutely. But, uh, I'm a, I'm a wise, Fire one. Out. I'm a wise Fire one. Out as a matter question. of fact, you know, same, I've, I've only been personally in two relationships in my life. Uh, the one I'm currently in, uh, you know, we hit four years today. As a matter of fact, my, my ladies here say, say hi, baby. Hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm here with my lady. So I can agree with a lot of the thing. A lot of the things you say do have substance, you know, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and in today's society, you know, when it comes down to, you know, the dating world, it's it's very difficult, especially because women are constantly being programmed by all this nonsense garbage and all this, you know, fantasy la la land bullshit that's on social media. But but at the same time, when it comes down to like, you know, the, that, that machismo, you know, ma- making sure that, you know, you, you're keeping your lady in check. And I, I think, you know, a, a, some of that, you know, is, is very important because you can't let a, a, a woman, you know, run wild. You know? Of course. Especially when, you know, of you, of course you have a lot of brother. Let me let me let brother. Let me interrupt yeah. you. Can you fire? Can you fire off some questions, man? I don't want you hogging up. Of course. The show. Shoot. So wait, wait, what, what was that? You said you had a bunch of questions. Oh no, Stop those fine. were those were the questions. Like you know, I just wanted to see like where are your bases because again, I don't I don't really know you well. So just those were the few questions. Like you know, are you married? Do you have a lady? That kind of Got stuff, it. right? But 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 I Got you know it. just going off to you know what, now agreeing with we you know, talking about the things that I agree with. Where is like yeah, man, a lot of these women, you know, they all they just need fun. That's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, women women want to have fun, right? That's all they want. If you, they're bored. Big problem, you know, and, and, and look, man, that's the that's a life principle in general. Absolutely. Whoever has the whoever has the most fun wins in any endeavor. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, and and it's dangerous when uh, the the girl starts to get bored. You know, it's uh, you got to keep them on their toes all the time. Uh, but you know, and, and especially one hundred percent, you know, which is why, which is why, my friend, that the stoicism shit is also sort of an outdated sequence because the the emotional man and i'm not talking about a man who fucking cries i'm talking about a man who wears his heart on his sleeve is a man who will keep a woman completely riveted until the end of time and exhilarated because we've come out of a culture where men were very fucking hardened after world war ii a lot of stoicism you know the the thousand yard stare that shit worked to a degree, but in the modern culture, the man who's very expressive and artful with the way he feels is a man who can con- not, only, not only conquer the world, but certainly conquer a woman's heart. It's that, that's a fundamental that I think a lot of men have missed. A lot of men are repressing and sucking down their feelings and the way they feel about shit. No, 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 no. You got to let that shit roar. And I'm talking about everything. Explosive anger. You got to have fits and spasms and conniption fits sometimes. Because it, it, it balances the universe. And a motherfucker who just pretends to be cool all the time and nothing ever bothers him, mm-hmm. that, that starts to wear down a relationship. Yep, that shit doesn't work, man. You know, there's nothing wrong with expressing uh, uh, how you feel and how certain things make you feel. You know, uh, uh, definitely, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve, very important. You know, that whole machismo and always being tough, you know, never being able to show that, that soft guy, that shit don't work that, that you know, that, it, it, you know, back in the day, you know, in those days, yes, not in today's day and age, especially if, if, if you're trying to, to, you know, uh, if you're with a woman for, for, you know, for a long time and you're, you know, you're trying to keep it going, you know, that, that stuff just doesn't work, man. But yeah, man, um, it, it doesn't work. Shit, you know, so, 
Hell so no. The, the thing that I'm postulating here, which is important, is that a lot of men don't understand that very hyper masculine men have an unconscious feminine that is acting on behalf of the conscious masculine. And the unconscious feminine in a male is a very, very critical stage of development that a lot of men have missed. What I mean by that is, there's, if you notice this, this is a very, very, dis, this is a very poignant kind of esoteric distinction. A lot of hyper-masculine men like feminine things in the sense that the most masculine motherfuckers I've ever met love very feminine music. Like, killers, literal, literal fucking killers, stranglers will fucking almost be brought to tears by listening to a fucking ballad. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is a balance. There is a balance in the human biology that a lot of men have missed. And what I'm talking about Absolutely. Here, with that with that artful expression, that artful expression that I was just talking about, about expressing emotions, okay. that's the unconscious feminine acting on behalf of the conscious masculine. Because if you do have the masculine overlay, the masculine overlay is very important, which means that you're not afraid to be at the tip of the spear. You're not afraid to absorb the bullets and the shots for the relationship. You're the one who's supposed to absorb all the pain. That's a man's responsibility. Right. But, but the emotional component underneath that volcanic, you know, avalanche of emotion, if that shit is suppressed, then what you do is you end up suffocating. You end up suffocating the anima which is the unconscious feminine. And a lot of men right now are, are really struggling with developing the unconscious feminine. Because 100%. The, the, the mm -hmm. remember, I just, remember how I just talked about how women are the ambitious ones? Yep. Well, the, the, the male ambition, the male drive comes from that unconscious feminine. And this is a point that's been lost a lot, uh, upon a ton of men. Um, but yeah, bro, interesting discussion. I, I like the direction you pushed this in. Absolutely. You know, I, you know a, a lot of men, you know, don't realize that, you know, some of the greatest uh, uh, conquerors in the world, some of the greatest world leaders in human history, one thing they all had in common is they all had a great woman by their side. And, you know, in these this day and age, very difficult to find that, you know, you have to have peak judgment of women which is very difficult nowadays especially with the social media and all that garbage you know uh my uh, uh suggestion to the young men who are struggling to find that one woman is hey man if you if you're in america if you're in a big city if you're you know go out to the countryside hell go to other countries man uh you know find your find yourself a foreign woman uh you know my lady she's uh from el salvador uh, you know, she, uh, you know, she, she's, you know, got my, my foreigner, man. Call me Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> but, hey, man, I appreciate you doing the space, man. Uh, this is, this is a lot a lot of truth into what you're saying. Um, and, and, you know, just wanted to hop on here and, and just kind of add a little bit to, to, to the, the, you know, the, the truth that you're pushing out there. Because it's very important nowadays, especially with, with you know, the culture and, and all this garbage in the red pill community. Uh, that's the, actually the reason that I made this account is, destroying the red pill community one degenerate at a time all these motherfuckers like andrew tate tristan tate all these guys are pushing this oh you know blah 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 blah, blah. they're pushing all this nonsense and they're not even you know uh you know anchored down you know what i mean they're not solid themselves and and that just that stuff is is ruining people you know my my, my lady's little brother is is influenced by somebody like andrew tate and, 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 and I had to tell him like, yo, like take it with the great, yes and no, you know, uh, there, you know, he's got good points, but you know, having hoes, that shit ain't good for you, man. That shit ain't good for you. It's not good for your mental health. It's not good for, it's not good for your soul, you know, sleeping around with all these women, that stuff will destroy you. You know, when it comes down to energy, you know, women who sleep around with a lot of men, they, they, they become mentally ill. You know, they, they keep they and, and they store all that energy within them. It never goes away. And even though it doesn't affect men the same way it affects women, it 100 percent absolutely affects men uh, in a mental state. Uh, you know, I have a buddy who, you know, he's going through stuff and whatnot, moved to a new city. And, you know, he told me he's been sleeping around. He told me he slept with three girls in one night he told me by the third one he felt fucking disgusted and 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 i'm you know i had to talk to him and you know and just be like yo this this ain't the way you know but 
in, in today's society, you know, it's it's you know we're living in a fucked up time, man. Especially for 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 men who are trying to find a good a good woman, and at and they're constantly being pushed this red pill garbage of of you know having hoes on the team. No, 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 man. All these people want to be a fake damn billionaire, and that shit don't work in the real world. It's just, it, it's not it's not how the world works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to cut you off and, and kind of tailgate one of a point you just made because you did make a good point that I, would, I do want to piggyback. Um, the Look, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've am been a big critic of modernity. However, I do want to mention that modernity is offering a lot of handouts that a lot of men are afraid to take. And there's a lot of freebies right now that are being given by modernity. One of them is, and look, uh, some of this shit makes me shiver and disgust, but I believe in adapting to the times. AI is here to stay. None of this shit's going anywhere. Steroids are here. Surgery. It's all headed in this fucking, you know, gangly, gargantuanly disgusting direction. However, I do believe, and I've reversed positions on this, I've been probably one of the most hostile attackers of steroids and TRT and hormone therapy and shit for a long time, because I do believe it destroys the brain fundamentally. However, however, I've, I've recently somewhat revised my viewpoint just from the standpoint of modernity. If a motherfucker wants to abuse these modern drugs to get themselves into a position of intensity where they want to break through to the top, I co-sign that because here's what I think. And this was like a, I think that it, it, it almost doesn't matter. It matters the brain damage to the top. It doesn't take very much mental firepower to maintain your position. So basically, if you're going to be a stimulant addict and you're going to fucking blast coffee and cigarettes and fucking TRT and all this fucking monstrous shit, Use it to break through to the top. You're going to be a very fucked up organism by the time you get there. But it doesn't take much brain power to maintain that. So I'm all for it, to be honest with you. Like, I, I, I really, really despise the transhumanism movement in general. Because I just Same think here. it's anti-nature. But I'm to a point now where I'm like, look, modernity is giving out these free handouts. And if you're a motherfucker who's going to turn your cheek to it, you're just going to get fucking rocked. Everybody's using this stuff. So I'm not saying I'm going to jump on fucking steroids anytime soon, but I am flirting with the idea that if you're a young buck and you do hierarchy, you know, using some of these modern instruments, probably not a bad way. To go. There are consequences. Everything with uh, moderation, man. I, I Everything said, with moderation. I definitely agree. It's winning. It's the only ethical, pure, proven form of spirit. It's proving that you can beat the game. That's it. Everything else, everything else is on your side. So anyway, bro, I appreciate it. I'm going to keep it pushing. Yeah, man. Good. Let's get my hair up here. Don't want to talk to this dude. Yo, Brett. Hey, what's up, Brew? Can you hear me? Just checking if you can hear me. Yo, Brett, I hear right, you. you. Okay, beautiful. Hey, guys, if you haven't listened to Gastronomy of the Eye, go listen to that right after this. Um, Brew, right. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about what you think the most attractive trait in a woman is I've come to believe that loyalty is maybe the most beautiful trait and I want to hear you speak and I want to listen about the role of sacrifice as a man in relationship yeah for sure um so the most attractive quality bar none for me is I love a woman who can stand up for herself and assert herself in public so if a if a you know if a fucking patron at a restaurant is encroaching our territory or someone's fucking you know being fucking rambunctious i have no problem with a chick flashing her fangs to squash the situation before it comes to my desk and i have to be the fucking tyrant dictator 
So like, uh, you know, I, a very crude example, I'll be at a restaurant. I'm very friendly because I'm a regular at most restaurants that I frequent. And some of the servers get way too cozy with me. And they, they think we're friends because I fucking tip well and I'm a fucking, you know, I'm a nice guy. And what happens is some of these motherfuckers, I'll be in a fucking private, intimate conversation, clear as day, and a motherfucker will sit down at my table. And before I can even fucking chime in and extinguish it, my chick will be like, hey, did you not see we're in the middle of a, of a private conversation? You need to leave the, the chair right now. Like something like that. And, and, and that's something that you have to really train and instill in a woman. Women really will not assert themselves at that level naturally. It's something that I put in my woman and taught her how to do. Very, very fucking attractive quality. Because basically what she's doing is she's extinguishing a fire that's going to brew, that's going to fucking brew and it's going to get real ugly if I'm the one who has to come in and tell this motherfucker to leave. So I have no problem with a woman stepping in and doing shit like that. Yeah, that makes sense, man. <clears throat> so you feel like that's... What was, your, what, what was your other question? Oh, yeah. No, I wanted to hear you speak about... Um, you talk a lot about that dynamic of the masculine, the feminine, and the anima. And I want to hear your take on the role of sacrifice and even just like ritual in in those long-term relationships. What aspects do you feel like a man is called to sacrifice without compromising his ethos? So I think the biggest thing is when it comes to petty shit, I don't think it's ever wise to drag a woman into the mix. Like if you're, if you're going through a difficult time or you're having a difficult emotional day, I don't think that's anything that you should ever drag a woman into. However, I think the biggest sacrifice, and this is kind of counterintuitive, is when you are dealing with really, really monumentally large issues, I think it's very important to drag your woman right in there with you. I don't believe in a free safety zone in relationships where, look, I understand that the, the context of a, of a strong relationship is that a woman should basically be innocent and happy while you're fucking battling and tussling with the universe. That's, that's, essentially, that's essentially what a clean relationship looks like. But, but when the call to adventure does hit and there's shit that's, you know, the fires are, are, are roaring at your feet and there are things that you need to do. I do believe it's very important for a man to be able to pull his woman into the middle of the fire with him to support him. And I think a lot of men are afraid to do that because it's very difficult and you have to be a good leader. But I do think women should be dragged into the drama on certain occasions and at certain points in order to just have the morale. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes perfect sense because it, it's probably the experience is one of vulnerability, but it's strategic. Yeah, it's strategic. And, uh, you know, like women are never going to be like your, your problems as a man are always going to be incomprehensible to a woman. Like a woman can never is never. That's why it, it's worthless to sit there and, and talk about your problems, because a woman's never going to be able to, to relate to what a man goes through on a daily basis. Business problems, relationship problems, whatever, whatever fires are being started, a woman's never going to be able to fully relate to that. However, pulling her into the drama and giving her a taste of the emotions that you're feeling is always very important with the big shit. Because then you really see what she's made of. You see how uncomfortable she is. You get to see her nervous tics. You get to see what her constitution is. And that's the real test. That's the real test. Like when you're going through it, when you're going through the ringer, sometimes all you. This is it. She doesn't have to say a fucking word. Let me be on the phone. Let me put out fires. Let me rack my brain. Let me solve problems. You just sit there and fucking stroke my fucking the stubble on my face or fucking rub my back. That's all you need sometimes. And I think <laughs> a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid to a woman yeah that's powerful and i appreciate that man i've been with my beloved woman for 15 years and i can validate many of the concepts you're saying are extremely they're core and they take a lot of pain to really learn so i just appreciate you sharing all this stuff man
Big respect. A massive amount of a massive amount of pain, bro. I'm, I appreciate that. It's uh, men really don't understand the responsibility they have in these relationships. Mm-hmm. You got to keep everything together. You really do have to keep everything to get together and be the cohesion. But at certain points, you know, you do have to drag your woman into it with you, and that's the hardest fucking thing to do because you don't know how brittle she is until you do it. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Thank you, bro. Yeah. I appreciate it. 100%. Yeah. Hey, what's up, bro? Yo. How you doing? <clears throat> Hi, uh, can you hear me all right? Yo, Apostle. Yo, is my uh, is my mic working? Apostle, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me, bro? Yeah, we're good to go. All right, cool. Uh, hey, man, so stoked to have another brute space. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, for a lot of these young guys in maybe their late teens, early 20s, what do you think is like the definitive or the most important heroic mission that we've got maybe in this decade, in the next 20 years or so, that that's really going to shape kind of where we go as a society, as a, as a people moving forward. What is, what is the biggest thing you think young men should be focusing their attention to? Dude, I think, I think men should be pissing away their 20s, honestly. I think, I think men should absolutely be unafraid to completely piss away their 20s and, and living almost like there's no tomorrow. I think the life experience that you accumulate, especially in this society, is going to turn you into a different kind of fucking beast. I, I, I do not subscribe whatsoever to the philosophy that if you piss away your 20s, you're fucked in your 30s. That's a complete lie. Men in their 20s should be blowing shit up, blowing up accounts, taking shots, taking fucking crazy risks. You're fucking young. You have infinite energy and vitality. You can fucking rebuild. You can repair relationships. You can prove yourself. Um, I think learning to reign and lord over chaos is really the most important skill that you can have as a man by far. Order is for the weak, and I think the motherfuckers who can lord over chaos pretty much run the world, especially when you know that you can come back and call upon that past experience. What you don't want to do is get in your 30s and be a fucking square who fucking, you know, nestled and, and catered everything so fucking flawlessly in your, in your 20s because success is not linear. Everybody knows it's circuitous. Everybody knows success is jagged and it, you know, you, sometimes you zigzag, sometimes you drop snakes and ladders is a good metaphor of this, but I do. I, I look, when I say piss away your twenties, what I mean is the experience that you accumulate does make it a lot easier to fucking get back on your feet in your thirties. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, especially if you took really good care of yourself physically and you have that health reservoir, you can fucking storm back from anything, but all you need is one good swing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think guys understand it's all about that first good swing. You only need to hit a grand slam once in your life. That's it. You just need one, one, one granny. One granny, and that's it. And you fucking clear the bases, and it's, it's all she wrote. So I think, you know, people talk about the 3,000 X's, the 5,000 X's, the 10,000 X's. Everyone wants these huge multipliers. The only way to do that is to put yourself in very, very bizarre, uncanny situations where you have to sort of fight your way out because that's where you really find your identity and figure out who you are. I think in your 20s, you should be trying all sorts of different fucking professions. You should be a fucking polymath. You know, I respect it if you're on a fucking linear path, you want to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. That's, that's, all, that's, all, that's all fine and dandy. But if you, if you have any business sense about you whatsoever and you want the best out of life, you should be fucking trying on professions like fucking wardrobes. You know what I mean? Like you should be trying it on like a fucking costume and see if this one fits, see if this one fits, see if this one fits. All you'll get out of it is it'll, it'll turn you into a fucking renaissance, man. But you should be putting up shots, enormous shots. Throw your money at shit. Throw spaghetti against the wall. See what sticks. Because people don't understand. Money can always be, money comes and goes. Money comes and goes. Money can always be made. You can fucking, you can fuck things up a million times. And you can, you know, a lot of being a man is outrunning your mistakes. It's okay to fuck up. It's okay to fucking, it's okay to blow shit up. That's fine. What matters is your commitment to rectify the situation. 
You know what I mean? I'm in that right now. I'm in my fucking mid thirties and I'm rectifying a ton of fucking situations right now, right now. And I'm just staying ahead of the curve and I'm fucking fighting and I'm fucking generating and I'm doing all sorts of fucking crazy shit to get, to get, to get everything back. And it's a good feeling because I have my past experience to call upon. I've never failed. It's never happened. I've never, ever truly failed in my life. I've had horrible losses, but I've always found a way to overcome it. And it was from being in my 20s. Dude, I pissed away my whole fucking 20s. Literally lobbed it into the universe recklessly. <sighs> recklessly. And all it did is give me a huge fucking palette of wisdom and experience to draw from. Which is which is kind of built the foundation that I'm on today. So, um, you know, if you have that rough and tumble kind of spirit and you have that kind of cowboy heart, then you just got nothing to lose in your 20s. You really don't. You really don't. And it's it's you know these guys talk about fucking being primal and return to tradition and primal living. There's nothing more primal than living day to day. And just using the resources that you got every day. You don't have to think about tomorrow. You don't have to think about next month. You don't have to have a five-year plan. You just be the best that you can every fucking day you wake up. And you take everything day by day. Sometimes moment by moment. Sometimes minute by minute. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's just a slow crawl. But if you live at maximum capacity every day, ironically, you do become the greatest builder of all time. You become an architect. That's what you become over time. You don't, you know, you don't have to extrapolate out as a man. It's, it's sort of a feminine prophecy. When women worry about the future, the, you know, that's like a primarily woman, you know, default setting. Women, women really, really trip out hard about the future. Men don't have to do that. You just wake up and get your ass in the gym and do what you got to do today. And everything will sort itself out. That's the best advice I could give a man is take everything fucking day by day. Don't be afraid to use the resources you have today. Don't be afraid. You'll figure it out. And if you won't, and if you don't figure it out, then there's some Darwinian interference there. You probably weren't going to make it anyway. So let's just get, you know what I mean? Let's just get to the, let's just get to the brass tacks and let's rip the veneer off and see what you're made of early. Rather than having a fucking, you know, squabbled fortune in your thirties and you were a tight wad knit in your fucking twenties. How are you going to deal with that? That's the problem. If you're a fucking tight wad and you're tight fisted and you're cheap, fiscally in your 20s what happens when a great tragedy does benight you in your 30s you have no frame of reference you have zero experience to call upon and it is harder in your 30s it is harder because it's harder to regenerate and the recovery takes a little bit longer but if you have that palette of wisdom and experience from your 20s you're a juggernaut you're a motherfucker to go up against so Man, the day-by-day -day living, look, peak masculinity is having redundancy baked into your day. I'm going to say that again. Peak masculinity is having redundancy baked into every day. Every day as a man should almost look the same from a procedural perspective. Now, the serendipity and the, the fortunes that will befall you in the, in the, in the inner midst of that will certainly change. You'll have those fluctuating variables. You know what I'm saying? There's oscillation there. But as far as the procedure, the gym, the sanctuary, the rituals that you perform, it's just peak redundancy. And that's what masculinity is. It's just fucking redundancy. It's, it's, it's pushing your shoulder to the wheel and moving the boring, redundant levers until you hit the jackpot. And a lot of guys don't want to hunker down and buckle down and put it and do that. Because we all know the most boring mechanisms of your business make the most money. They're boring as fuck. The shit that works is super boring. It's super tedious. It's super tedious. And that's, you know, that's been baked into sort of every philosophy. Every philosophy has sort of touched on this in its, in its own way. But, um, yeah, bro. In your 20s, live like there's no tomorrow. And see what you become in your 30s. You will be a fucking galley of wisdom and fucking knowledge and shit and then you'll be able to fucking you know refabric and you'll be able to fucking like patch shit together a lot quicker it, it's like having alien technology that's really what it is you're in your 30s you, you, you fucking adventured hard you voyaged hard in your 20s when you're in your 30s you have alien tech you have alien tech to rebuild 
you have a certain capacity to to move through shit storms that are ordinary people don't have because they didn't get the alien tech. They didn't fucking invest the years to get the adventures and the life experience. That's what's up, man. My, uh, I'm on a little bit of a different path right now. My, my dad's Armenian. I'm an only child. So there was a lot of pressure from like the men in my family to make sure I had a son and secure the last name. Uh, so I'm 26 right now. I got that. I got a son that I love more than anything. Got the last name secured. Now I'm trying to figure out how to regain some of that cowboy spirit I had when I was younger and, and still yeah. keep my eye on, you know, keeping my family secure. I'm like, I'm the breadwinner. My, my wife doesn't work. Um, so trying to find that balance. It's a, yeah, you got to strike that golden middle, my friend. Like I have, a, I have a son too who just turned three years old. And um, if anything, having him has sort of revitalized the cowboy spirit. I haven't I haven't made any provisions in my in my personal strategy since having him. If anything, it's just lit a fire under my ass to go even harder. So so yeah, bro, that's a good point. That's what's up, man. Thank you. Get machete up here. Yo. Yo, what's up, machete? Boris. What's up, buddy? Yeah, so I had I had I have like two questions. I'm gonna fire away. The, the first one kind of locks into your talk about long term relations and all that. I see a lot of young men nowadays, uh, especially when I get to like 17, 18, 19. It really, really, is is just something about those hookups. You just flow to the fucking. They just fly to them like because it's fucking meat and i'm just i'm just like super confused what's the mechanism that drives them there i think it's some weird it's some weird fucking way of them proving themselves to their father or something or whatever or maybe it's kind of like a cope for not being able to hold down a for a while because figure out like it's actually a fucking challenge it's, it's i mean you shit needs you shit needs to be fucking Tight all the time. If 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 you don't want to, whatever the fuck leave. So, um, you're talking about you're talking about male hookups, right? With women. I mean, yeah, I'm like not like gay to gay fucking male to male hookup. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, hold on one second. 